Hey guys, welcome back to that Turbo Dakota YouTube channel. So if you're watching last episode, I pulled the trains out of Dakota, tore it down on the bench, and if you're curious, I'm pretty sure I found what the culprit is, and I do believe it was a misadjusted shifter bracket. You know, when I serviced it for the year after we got done wiring it up, I changed the oil, I changed the trans fluid, you know, I pulled the cable off. When I put the thing back, I should have double checked the adjustment, but I didn't. And I do believe what was happening was, and it only, you know, because it's manual valve body, it just has to be a little bit out of adjustment to the point where it had that forward clutch drum, which is the rear clutch drum in the trans, just partially applied. And that would make sense why of the heat marking on those center clutches, even though it had all the material on it, it just looked like somebody put them in the oven. And we looked at that in the other video, I'll show you here briefly. But I got what I needed. The parts weren't that real expensive. I do have to send the converter out. I'll show you guys here in a second when I flip the camera around. When I first put this thing together, I was having some issues with the converter dragon. Um, had to send some parts out and got them back and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And that was, you know, two years ago was when I put this thing together for the first time. So it's, you know, I know at that point in time it was probably hurt. You can see uh, some heat marking of the converter and we'll look at it real quick where that clutch disc was dragging. So part of this is gonna be sending that converter back out to Ultimate Trans and having it repaired or looked at. So we'll see how much, you know, how that goes, how much it costs and the whole nine. But for right now, I'm just concentrating on getting this trans. Everything cleaned up nice and neat, you know, check all the clearances in it and put the thing back together. Let me flip the camera around and I'll show you the converter and we'll look at the clutches real quick. So I've been throwing all the old stuff in here, but you can see the clutches right here. Like I said, they're just a little bit burnt. I did rep replace that Belleville spring just because if you look at it really, really close, and I did not notice this before, see this half moon? That's from heat, which was the same heat that fried that. And that's what I'm telling you, you know, that stuff was definitely partially applied from that misadjusted cable. We'll come over here to the converter real quick, and I'll show you what I was talking about here. And if you look, see the heat marks that should not be there that shouldn't be there and what you're looking at is that clutch for that lockup inside here or it was dragging and then you know when i did service the thing this year when i changed oil there was a lot of clutch material on the bottom that's one of the more reasons why i tore it apart but as you can tell all those clutches had all the material on them even though that was a little bit burnt the material was still there so it indefinitely came out of that lockup disc in there so that's something i'm going to have to get squared up and taken care of but I got to clean that stuff, clean that stuff. I'm not going to videotape the whole thing because it's kind of monotonous. I will show you, we'll talk about some of the different components I'm using in my trans, and then I'll show you how I check the clearances uh, for some of these clutch packs in it. So let me put the camera down and get to work. So let's talk about the guts inside this transmission just real quick. Here is your front. This is considered your front drum or direct drum, and this is considered your forward clutch drum. These are both billet drums, uh, TCS and TCS. And then inside here, this is a billet piston. And the point of that piston is it's just a hair taller to take up some of the slack between the input shaft, which is also billet from TCS, and this drum right here. Naturally, these transmissions, the 46s, the 47s, 48s, have a little bit of slop in them when you pull it, and I'll show you guys here in a bit, but when you pull it apart, you can, it flops around a little bit, and it's got it all, all but tightened up. I think it's got four or five thou worth of plate with ain't nothing compared to the 30 or 35 it comes with. Right now, I've got our dial indicator set up here. I'm just using the converter to hold everything in place. I put a little bit of oil or a little bit of air, I'm sorry, on this passage hole right here and try to hold everything real still. And then that's how I get my reading on my dial indicator. So I'm getting somewhere around 30.035, so 35,000. And according to the specs for John's valve body, that's where it needs to be. So this is complete. The only thing I gotta do is throw some new ceiling rings on it. But for right now, I'm gonna pull it apart and I'll stick it back in the uh, bag over here to keep it nice and clean and then we'll move on to the direct drum before i bag this thing up what i was telling you about this play so this is your input shaft and this drum actually fits over it like this and it's got some snap rings and that big uh, spring they call the bellville spring but if you can see i don't know if you can catch that because it's just so little movement but from the factory with all the factory stuff man you grab a hold of this shaft and pull up on it and that thing moves 
you know, at least 30,000. I mean, it has a little bit in it right now, but that's nothing, trust me, compared to the factory stuff. And this is really important on a high pressure, you know, valve body. If all that slops in there, you can actually take the piston, the billet piston I showed you guys, and it'll push out past the uh, seals. And then the thing stays in gear and it's, it's just not fun. So that's a common. Another thing I actually had happen, and I have it right here on the bench, that is the factory one right there. And if you can see, it's split in half. That's the cast uh, cast piece, and that's why I had to switch this billet, because it actually split that thing in half from all the pressure. I don't know if you know who John Cope is and keep up with him. I got a lot of this stuff from him. He talks about that, and that's one of the reasons we had to switch over uh, to this piece right here. But anyway, I'm gonna bag this up and then keep trucking along. I wanna show you guys something real quick. So when you're setting up the clearances in these drums, use these snap rings. All these snap rings are actually different thicknesses. So what I do is I put my dial indicator on them. I think they make like an 061 or 062. They make an .088, uh, 108. And that's how I, I, you know, I can swap these things out and then get the correct clearance. Uh, according to John's instructions with the valve body, he wants between 075 and 085. So that's what I'm doing right now. It's the same process. Put air to it, set the dial indicator on it and uh you know check and check and check and you know swap the snap rings around but i just want to show you guys that real quick i want to see if i can get you guys a good shot with one hand so i hit that port on the back of the pump it's a little bit off let me try this one more time so right there you see about 0.070 six let me adjust the dial on this thing not the old harbor freight put the air in it right there yeah so 076 so that is fine i have no issues with that sometimes i'll do this a couple times to set the just kind of seat the clutches again i didn't tear this pack apart there was well, I did, but I didn't pull the piston out of it and replace the seals. There's really no need to. Um, there's there's nothing wrong with them. Obviously, you can hear them, you know, making really, you know, it's uh, doing really good. Excuse me, getting all mixed up. It's doing really good. I don't hear any air at leaking past. I mean, a little bit of that's normal, but if, for me to hit it with air right there, and that's just shop air. You know, shop air is, what, 110, and this thing's getting fluid of 175 or more PSI. But right there so that's it man that's the low side of our limit so this drum's good so i'm gonna take this bad boy and sit it in my bag start putting this thing back together i already put my servo in right there so that's for the second d uh second gear band so i put that in i gotta knock out this little selector shaft seal then we will put the other servo in for the low and reverse and then after that we'll just start throwing some parts in this thing and I'll put the tail shaft in last with the overdrive. I want to show you guys what I was doing a little bit off and on and it's kind of boring. This thing right here that's our rear support and inside here goes the piston. Now that piston when that piston applies it actually presses on the clutch set inside your tail shaft and that's what's going into overdrive. That's for your overdrive. So this thing right here I've got it pretty much ready to go. I'll put a little bit of assembly lube inside and outside so you know it's like putting a motor together so we don't have any dry starts this thing fits pretty tight in here and then so basically it's it's ready to go i stick a little bit of that assembly loop on here for the gasket and then we'll take it and line it up like so and then very very carefully it's gonna go in it might need a little bit of help so what I can do is take some of the bolts, excuse me here for a second. So I got some of the bolts and I'll just, just barely start them. And that's going to ensure that things going in here straight. Just take a couple like so. And then I'll just take like a rubber mallet or something and just give it a couple of taps. I can do it like that. I can, I can run it in with the bolts. I prefer just to tap it through because if you start tightening these bolts and you start tightening them crooked, 
uh, you know, you risk damaging that support where it slides into this case and it, you know, it fits pretty tight. So you just want to be careful. And then it indefinitely uh, will get torqued down. And we'll talk about that here in a second too. So I can just take the butt of this hammer and very carefully knock that thing in there until it's down like that. Shedding a little bit of dust. So, rear support's in. Okay, so I've been searching for a torque wrench. And as you can tell, I broke down and went to Harbor Freight. I did a bunch of research. I actually, I don't, I have a half inch torque wrench that just foot pounds, but I needed one that did inch pounds. I let a couple slip through the cracks on eBay, uh, Matco, Snap on, whatever. I started looking around, and believe it or not, these things seem to have a pretty good track record, especially as accuracy. And as little as I'm going to use it, I'm okay with that. Um, even on Harbor Freight's website, the place that you can send this stuff to and get it checked out really isn't too hateful far from me. So we're going to give this thing a test drive. Um, I had it out of the package earlier. It, it is pretty nice. So I know, you know, Harbor Freight's thing with this was it's competition for some of the big, you know, tool trucks and stuff. Um, it's definitely not their lowest line. I think it was like, I don't know, 104 bucks, but it does do inch pounds and the old Newton meters. So we're gonna try this thing out. Hopefully it is as accurate as everybody says. So I've got my service manual turned to figure out what the torque spec is and it said 13 foot pounds. So let me just double check. And I'll show you guys if you can see that. I know the print's small. So they call it the overdrive uh, piston retainer, rear support, whatever you want to call it. So 13 foot pounds or 17 Newton meters. 13 foot pounds or 17 Newton meters. So we'll try this bad boy out. So we'll go off Newton meters here. That's on the back side. You got to pull the collar down and rotate it. And at zero, looks like that's 10.7. And that is 15.3, 16.4, 17.5, what did I say? I'm not even paying attention. It's actually, yeah, 17 Newton meters, so that's actually too far. So that is 17.5. All right, so we'll go back five tenths to 17. Appears to be 17 Newton meters right there. It looks like to be about 149 inch pounds. So we're going to try that out. Hopefully that's right. In fact, let me double, give me a second. Let me double check. Let me, okay, good thing I, I double checked. It's actually 156 inch pounds. It's 13 foot pounds. So I'm gonna do this, oops. I think I grabbed the wrong sockets. There we go, three eight. So, one. Two, we'll just go around in a star pattern. Three. Four. Five. Six. 
six. And then I go back around one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. All right? So piston is in. So we got that squared up. So the next thing I'm going to do, now that I got that piston in, is I got to put the low reverse drum in it. Well, actually, no. We're going to put the sprag in it. Then we're going to do the low reverse drum. So I have to reposition for us for a second. You guys can see that right there. So this thing right here, people refer to this thing as a sprag and basically it's a one way roller. So it'll roll one way and then grab the other and it sits down in this race. And again, this, this is the, the bolt in version uh, that came from a and a transmission. Is it needed? Probably not. Do I have it? Yes. So very carefully drop that sprag down in there like so. So that's taken care of, that's no big deal. And then what I'll do is I gotta have my low reverse band it goes in here with wherever it is. This little guy right here sitting on the bench, that goes in there. So let me grab that stuff real quick. Okay, so I loosened up this little guy right here. That's our adjustment for my rear band and then just cut the snot out of myself. Didn't catch that on camera, but that's not important. So that's our rear band for our low and reverse. So that guy sits in here like this. And then I very, very carefully rotate him till he hits that notch. Now once he's rotated, this guy goes in here like so. And you gotta watch this thing because it's actually, it's not perfectly square. So I gotta be careful how that guy goes in there. Actually, what I'm gonna have to do is take the screwdriver. Oop. Told you guys I was gonna struggle with this. Just because the camera's here. If the camera wasn't if the camera wasn't here, I uh I'd probably have it the first time. But it is what it is. Guy right there is our low reverse drum. That sprag runs on the outside. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some of this goop and we'll rub some here on the inside race. So we're not starting this thing up dry. I'm going to take and rub some of this junk here on the outside. It's like it's like finger paint for adults, right? Like so, and this thing very carefully is going to go down here if we're lucky. Just like that. And then, so if you'll notice, if you guys can catch it on camera, I'll spin it one way like this. And when I try to get back the other way, it doesn't. And that's how that thing works. Like I say, it's, it's a one way, it is like a one way uh, roller. And that is its design. So that's that. Now there is a, I'll grab it real quick. There is a little thrush washer shim with two little tabs. So it drops down in here like so, like that. Then there is a C-clip and it drops down in there. I'm gonna take my special pliers, grab a hold of that bad boy and seat it like so. All 
All right, that's it. And then I'll adjust that later. So, let reverse is in. We'll look at it real quick. I can show you guys what I was doing. You can see the, it's kind of hard to see, but the clip's already on it with the thrush washer. This thing rolls one way and then stops the other. I got all my linkages in, so that's good. I did put this, I don't know if I told you, I put these the surveys in off camera and then I'll show you an air check. Uh, we'll take you through an, uh, just a quick air check when that's all said and done. So we got that going for us. This is when it gets dicey. Because the next thing I need to do is put the gear train in this thing. When I put the gear train in, the, t the intermediate shaft is going to stick out through the bottom. So, theoretically, I got to push this thing over on its side. This has all your plants and stuff in it. Um, I did not take it apart. I definitely wouldn't consider this a full blend rebuild. Obviously, you know, if you stuck with it this far, you understand what the situation was. Um, but whatever. So this thing goes in here like this. We slide it down through like so. So we got that going for us. So our gear train is in. Now, there are some washers. Excuse me, I know I'm crossing front of you, so you can't see. These guys right here, there is a washer and then a thrush, like wearable thrush washer that you can actually get in different thicknesses and that is to set the final in play on this bad man pajama. So our little round guy right there, we're gonna put some juice on him liberally and stick him in here. Like so. That's where he will live his life. We'll come back to that one here shortly. So that stuff's in there. Next, next, our drums are gonna go in right here. So we already checked the clearances in this stuff. We did that earlier. This is when the drums go into place. This part is kind of not fun to do, especially when you're working with the transmission on its side rather than up and down. So let me turn you guys off. I'm gonna reposition you guys real quick and we'll come back to it. Okay, after struggling to get the gear train in, I actually had to take the tail house back off, pull the guts at it, put it in the press and reset it, but I didn't show you guys any of that. That's, you know, we'll do that some other time. But I've got the gear train in it. Now I get to sit that drum in there, which is a total pain, pain in the butt. This thing is not light, especially with one hand. So basically, the clutches that sit in this drummer here have to spline with right here. I already got my washer. I've got my thrush washer. Second gear band, I just sit it on there. We got our Teflon rings. We got another metal clad ring that's down there. Everything should be ready to rock, so let's do it. So we got our two Teflon ceiling rings. Shims on, outside gaskets on. I've got the drum set down in place. I went ahead and threw the band in there. You can see right there. So everything is looking pretty good. Um, you do have to torque. So I had the pump apart, and then I pack and check everything out. Pack it full of the assembly goose so it doesn't start dry, and then torque these bolts. That pump separates, and I also replaced the seal for the converter on the other side. So basically now is the gasket's about sitting where it needs to go. So basically is we'll take this pump, try to do this with one hand, very carefully flip it over and then drop it down into place. Check them seals one last time. Everything looks good. And then very easily 
just like that. Thing looks pretty good. I do think I have to move it just a little bit. Let me pull it up and reset it real quick. Double check. Just want to check it one more time. It's really hard to do that with one hand. Everything looks good. All the seals are on. Right there. You can feel it slide down into place. The guys are right here. There they go. They go on the pump bolts. Right there. So there's one for each pump bolts. Two, three, like that. So, there's all them. Got my pump bolts over here in the container somewhere. I'm gonna make sure I remove the old gaskets off of them. I'll start them by hand. Like so. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna torque this thing in. Then after that, We'll put it back up on the bench. I'll clean the bench off and then we're gonna go ahead, adjust the bands to the valve body in. And that's pretty much it. I still have to get a filter kit. So I put a new filter kit in it. Um, and then that's that. The next step is that kind of that guy right there, he's gotta go out and we're good to go. Um, so I'm probably gonna end it off right here. This wasn't a really fun video. Uh, if you're not into this, it's not even, it makes sense. So I don't blame you if you don't watch. But again, thanks for watching as always. Hopefully we'll have this thing back up here shortly. There are some other things we're going to do to it. We're going to relocate the rear shocks on the other side of the axle. So I got to shoot that and, you know, whatever else. But again, thanks for watching. See you next time.